Uh, hello, this is Mrs. Ross, and this is Lesson 32, uh, the metric system, starred problems. Uh, so number four says a square and a regular pentagon. So a regular pentagon, this means that all sides and all angles are the same. Okay, share a common side, which is this one right here. The perimeter of the square is 20 centimeters. So if the perimeter of the square is 20, I know that if I divide that by 4, I'm going to get the side length. What is the perimeter of the pentagon? Five sided figure. Let's get a different color. So if this is 5 and this is a regular pentagon, each of these is going to be 5. So the perimeter of the pentagon is going to be 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 because there's 5 sides. Or you could say 4 times 5. I'm sorry, try that again. 5 times 5 because there's 5 sides, which is 25 centimeters. Explain how you got your answer. I just did. Okay. Mentally estimate the product of 313, so I'm going to say that's 300, and 489, I'm going to say that's 500. So 300 times 500, if I multiply 3 times 5 and get 15, and then I count my zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I get my answer. All right, what fraction of the rectangle is not shaded? So total, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 total. That's going to be my denominator, or the bottom number. The fraction that's not shaded is going to be 9 of the 10. So this is the fraction that's not shaded fraction. It says what decimal part is not shaded. So to go from here to here, I need to divide. 10 goes into 9, and this becomes 0.9. And then what percent is not shaded, so to go from here to here, I have to multiply by 100. So 0.9 times 100 is equal to 90%. All right. 9 says use words to write 3.025. So what they want, I, what they want from us is this part um, is 25, let's see, this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I have 3, and that's where the decimal place is, 25, 25 thousandths. Okay. All right, in 1988 Summer Olympics, American Jackie Joyner Kersey won the long jump event with a jump of 7 and 40 hundredths meters. Write this number as a decimal. So I know this is 7 point something hundredths, so this is the tenths place, this is the hundredths place, so this would be 40 hundredths. All right. Instead of dividing 15 by 2 and a half, double both numbers and find the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. So if I double this, 2 times 15 is 30, and I double this, I get 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. All right, don't worry about this blue square. It's covering up a non-starred problem you guys are going to do on your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work these, and I'm going to have to stop and erase. Um, anyway, 19 is an addition problem, which means I have to have a common denominator. So I know that 4 goes into 8, and 2 goes into 8, so I'm going to keep the 8. All right, let me find a different color. So to make this 4 and 8, I have to multiply by 2. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So what I have here is I have 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 4 is 8. So this and this are the same. 
and then the plus three eighths, nothing happens, nothing changes. And then plus, let me pick a different color. So to make this two and eight, I have to multiply by four. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, so I have four eighths. Now I can solve this. So I have two plus three is five, plus four is nine eighths. Then I have to divide or reduce, so eight goes into nine one time with one left over, and that's my answer. Okay, um, let me go ahead and erase. Uh, you know what, let me just skip down here and do 23, and then I'll erase it and do the ones that I can't reach, okay? Um, so here I need a common denominator, and two goes into six, so I'm gonna keep that. So I have six and one sixth, minus two and one half, uh, to get, uh, to make two into a six, I have to multiply by three here, and I'm gonna have to multiply the top by three. So this just comes over, nothing changes, minus the two comes over, nothing changes. Three times two is six, three times one is three. Now I have another problem. I can't take three away from one, so I have to borrow one from six. So when I borrow one, this becomes five because I've borrowed one, and the one that I borrow is gonna be six over six. So now I have five. One plus six is seven sixths. I'm kind of running into my other problem here. Nothing changes here. Oh, kind of went too far over. So seven minus three is four, all over six. Five minus two is three. I'm gonna to have to reduce this by dividing by two. I have to take my three with me. Uh, four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three, and that's my answer. Okay, so I made some more space. I marked off the ones we already did. Let's go ahead and do 20. So it looks like, I don't know, six and four, I could use 24. Um, I'm not sure what else I could use. Uh, two times two is four. Oh, I could use 12. I could use 12 or 24, it doesn't really matter. So uh, I'm gonna have to change both of them. So let's go ahead and make it 12. So six times two is 12. What I do to the <clears throat> bottom, I have to do to the top. And then four times three is 12. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 10 minus nine is one, 12. That's my answer. Okay, here I need a common denominator, um, and I'm going to go ahead and prime factor that. So let's see, two, 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 all of those are prime. And then 20 is 210, 25. So if I have 16 and 20, this is one, two, three, four, one, two, that. So if I circle that, I get two times two times two times two times five which is four, eight, 16 times five is 80. So I get a common denominator of 80. Um, this comes from here, this comes from here. These two twos are these two twos, and this is five. So let's see, to make this 80 equals, let's see, I'll just do this down here. If this is 80, let's see, 80 divided by 16 is five. So I have to multiply this by five, multiply this by five, which makes this 25 minus uh, here to make this 80, I have to multiply by four. So that's by four. So that's 12 over 80. So uh, 25 minus 12, let's see, that's three. 23 over 80, that's um, going to stay. 23 is prime, so there's nothing we can do about that. Did I subtract that right? No, I didn't. It's 13. My bad. Still going to stay. Still going to stay there. So we did that one. Let me do a little bit of erasing and we'll do 24. For the last one on this page, I'm going to need a common denominator and 2 goes into 8, so I'm just going to hold on to this. Uh, and then it's going to be plus 1. For this to be an 8, to make 2 and 8, I have to multiply by 4, multiply the top by 4, and I get 4 eighths. Uh, 5 plus 4 is 9 eighths. 4 plus 1 is 5. Now I have to deal with this, so I have 8 goes into 9 one time, 1, 
and one eighth. So my five becomes a six because of this one and one eighth. That's my answer. Okay, for problem 27 and 28, 27 is covered because it's probably not starred. 28 says estimate and then exact. Um, it's not that hard to do. I've talked about this before. I'm not a big fan of of estimate and then exact, but what they're saying is, okay, seven and three fourths is closer to eight than it is to seven. One and seven eighths is closer to two, so my estimated answer is 10. Um, if I'm going to do this problem, I need for this to be an eight because we need common denominators. So let me bring this down here. Uh, seven and three fourths plus one and seven eighths. I'm going to multiply this by 2 and this by 2, so I get 7 and 6 eighths. This is just going to come over with no change. 6 plus 7 is 13. 7 plus 1 is 8. Now I have to deal with this here. So 8 goes into 13 once with 5 left over. And then, so what I'm going to have to do is this 1 is going to bump this 8 up to 9, and then we just keep the 5 eighths on the end. Okay, let me change colors and see if we can't do 29. Uh, and do, let's just erase this. Okay. The coordinates of three vertices or corners of a rectangle are negative 5, 3. So let's see, negative 5, positive 3 would be right here. Negative 5, negative 2. Negative 5, negative 2 would be right there. 2, negative 2. 2, negative 2. Okay, so this is, what are the coordinates of the fourth vertex? So if I have two sides here, and I know this is a rectangle, golly, that's a beautiful artwork, Mrs. Ross. I know that this is going to be the next vertex, which is uh, 2, 2, because that's going to create a rectangle. And then it asks for the area of the rectangle, which is length times width. So let's see, the length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this side is 7. I'm just counting boxes here. And the width is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 7 times 5 is 35. I think that's my last problem. You guys have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions.